Good morning, Lighthouse Church. You guys ready to worship this morning? Come on, let's get up to our feet. Let's lift our voices as we sing together.
on, Jesus. We bless your name today. God, we honor you today. Father, we declare that it is your name that is above every other name. God, today we have gathered to worship our King, to worship our Savior, to hear from heaven. And so, Father, today we lift up every individual that's here in this room or that has tuned into a link online. And, Father, we declare there are no accidents. There is no accident that anybody's here, that you knew this gathering would take place and it would be orchestrated from the beginning of time. And so, Father, I ask today that you would speak to your church, that you would meet us right where we are at, that any of us who may have need, that we would find the accomplishment of what we need in you. And so God, I pray today that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done at Lighthouse Church today, God, as it is in heaven. And it's in your name that we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said a great big amen. I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so honored that you're here today. And uh, we're just ecstatic for what God has in store, for what he wants to speak to you about today. And so before you're seated, would you say hi to somebody around you? Would you greet somebody today? Say hello. to go. Hey, we want to just give a short moving forward update. And here's what I want to acknowledge today. Uh, Moving forward is a campaign that we started last September. And really what we see is a three-phase strategy on how we are going to reach more and more people in and throughout this region. And in this first phase, we are focusing on things that get the house of God in order. And so uh, we recognize that even when we have rolled out this initial vision of where God's leading us, uh, there's so many new people. Like you can look around the room right now and see there's a whole lot of new people. And this might be your first time hearing about what a moving forward is. And so here's what we wanted to do is I wanted to personally invite you to a moving forward vision night. Everybody say July 20th. At 6.30 p.m., we want to invite you to be a part as we talk about the future of our church. And we want to unpack this vision in detail and give you a a descriptive update on the things that we're working on in this first phase. So I would ask as your pastor that you make a priority to be here that night on July 20th. That if this is your home and you are connected to this body, Lighthouse Church is the people group, the church community that you belong to. Make sure you are here. As you just saw on the the, uh, video today, 
our roof that we, we had to put a new roof on. Our roof is completely done, and the city came out and gave it the full thumbs up. It looks good, which is amazing. Our house lights have been new, and there's several things coming over the next few weeks that you're going to see some improvements around here. But we want to take some time and unpack this together. So Tuesday night, July 20th at 6.30 p.m. Do not miss it. Hey, uh, church today, uh, we are in for a treat. And uh, I want to just, just say this last service was amazing. Our last gathering was so impactful. I received a report that there were nine people that made a first time decision to follow Jesus in our first gathering. And I'm, I'm, I'm expectant for what God has in store in this gathering. Today I asked a friend of mine to come in and to deliver the message. And his name is Jedediah Thurner. And he helps lead an organization called Missions Me. This is a global missional movement that is not only leading people to Christ, but it's changing the very landscape of what worlds or about countries and stuff look like. And this summer, in just a few short weeks, they are orchestrating the focus to be on the Los Angeles region. And we as a church, along with over 600 other churches throughout this region, are gonna get behind and serve our cities in amazing ways. And so I wanna just show you a short video before we get ready to, to receive the word today of what it is we're gonna help partner with them and their leadership to focus on. So check out the screens. partnering with the United States Department of Agriculture to distribute 30,000 pounds of food in all of these surf centers. Capturing footage of kids who are stuck in the system and need to be adopted. Working at a county level, we're really involved in trying to bring reform. A stream of hope into all 35 state prisons. Medical debt relief for 22,000 families. By June 15th, we can start to open up as business as usual. Who's ready to make history tonight? 20,000 team members uniting. It's time for us to be known as love again. When the world hurts, we love. When the world hates, we love. When the world falls, we love. When the world fights, we love. When the world lies, we love. Our response is love. So we are excited to partner with and get behind this. And um, what you can do is save this day, July 24th, Saturday, July 24th, Lighthouse Church, we will have a serve day where we serve in several capacities throughout this region. At the end of that day, it will culminate into a stadium event that will happen in downtown LA. And that's all I'm gonna say this time because I said too much last service. But I promise you in the next week here, you're gonna hear more information about uh, the people who are gonna be involved in this to share the gospel throughout this region as we focus on reaching people with the good news of the gospel. And so do not miss it, make sure to save that date. But here's what I wanna do, before I, um, Jedediah comes up to the stage to preach, would you stand to your feet? We wanna prepare our hearts to receive the message today. And so we're gonna sing and, and worship and we're gonna set our attention and our gaze on Jesus and Jesus alone. Listen, I don't know what your week may have had. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I do know that God loves you, that he is in control of the heavens and the earth and there is no need too big that our God cannot meet. And so let's fix our attention today on the author, on the perfecter of our faith as we sing songs in worship. And so God, we love you. God, we bless your name today. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in all of our lives. God, for those of us who need a move of God in our life right now, I pray that you would meet every single one of us wherever we are, that we would have an encounter with the living God today, that it would change everything about our existence. Come on, God. We don't just want to walk through the motions, but we want to look to our creator today. We want to look to our savior today, and we want to declare that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done in our lives today as it is in heaven. And so, Father, as as we lift up songs of worship, we pray that this would be a sweet aroma that is rising to you, that this incense would be sweet, and that you would inhabit the praises of your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Come on church, let's sing and go after the presence of God together today. Father, let the smoldering breath of God. 
fragrance of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out yeah. for hearts that burn with holy fear pure and 
Peter, sing this out.
Come on, go ahead, just praise him for a moment. Go ahead and take a praise break for a moment. Go ahead and set the atmosphere for expectation. Come on, if you plan on doing this in heaven, let's practice doing this on earth for a moment. Come on, we don't we, we got the band, we got the room. Let's just take a moment and say thank you. You're good. You're great. Come on, church, open your heart for a moment. I just, this is second service, so we're gonna do things we didn't do in first. This is the VIP experience. And I'm so sorry if you're having to catch up to my passion. I started earlier. I'm a, I'm a, this is my second one in, you know, I'm reheating the mill. So it's, there's already an energy and momentum. You're like, why is this guy like so here already? Because I'm standing in what started at nine o'clock that you guys have stepped into. And here's what I just felt. I'm not gonna let the rocks have to praise him because I'm doing my job. Jesus said, listen, if you don't praise me, creation will praise me. The rocks will cry out. They'll grow vocal cords and they'll create breath and they'll shout. But guess what? We have vocal cords and we weren't made for praise. We were made to praise. And let's just go get uncomfortable for a moment and stretch our praise muscles. Maybe this is how you praise. Try this. Maybe this is how you praise. Try this. Maybe this is how you praise. Try this for a moment. Just just get uncomfortable for a second. Come on, just for 10 seconds. Let's just release a praise break. doing so good and trusting me for not no, I haven't even like introduced myself yet like thank you for trusting me we're gonna take it one more level we didn't do this first service and listen I'm not trying to foster or fabricate a feeling so I want you to know that this is not for me I don't go home and tell my wife and four babies they shouted in worship it was like really great day for me this is not for me this is for us and I remember, uh, we can bring it down just a little bit or I'm gonna jump off this stage and crowd surf. It's like, get ready, the front row. You got me, you got me, you got me, she's got me. I love you guys. Um, I'll, I'll never forget my dad, 72, he's my hero. Uh, planted nine churches. I lived in 100 homes before I was 25. I was missionary kids, that's all for real. And I'll never forget, we moved into a de developing nation and my dad had done like five services that day. And we rolled into this very old church Everything about it felt stale, felt sterile, felt dead, to be honest. Uh, the band was bad. Um, the, the presence of God barely made it in the room. Like it wasn't, and it, my dad had like preached all day. He was exhausted. And I mean, there's not a lot of people in the room either, just being honest. And they start playing this, you know, song and my dad starts dancing. He's dancing, my dad. You know, he's like in his 60s at this time. And he's like doing his best church dance. I mean, he's got the kick down guys. See that, see what I did there? Like you have to go to BBS to learn how to do this. You know, like I got the church dance down. So my dad's doing this in a Latin speaking country and he's like church, he does this little arm thing. He's dancing around the stage. And he looks at me while he's dancing and he goes, dancing, he goes, I hate dancing. <laughs> and he like moves, he moves over. And then he comes back and he's doing his kick, you know, by me and his arms shaking. He looks at me and goes, I hate this. He tells me after, he goes, I hate dancing. He's like, but I'm free. And there's people in here that love dancing and they're not free. So I'm doing something I don't love to give people permission to do what they want. And some of you, when we had an opportunity to celebrate, you're free and, and you didn't take the opportunity to provide an excuse for someone who's not free to do what you have the freedom to do that they wish he could do, but is just waiting for someone to give him permission. Which means sometimes, can I tell you, or most times or almost all times, praise is not about you. In fact, they praised in the Bible, Paul and Silas, the prison gates were opened and it said everyone was set free because of the sound of their praise. These were people who were supposed to be in prison, got set free because of someone else's worship. 
which means sometimes someone's freedom is dependent on your praise. Someone, are you hearing me? Someone's breakthrough. And I just wanna give people in here permission one last time, I'm, this is not for me. But if you want to just release freedom here, because where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. Freedom to raise your hands, freedom to shout, freedom to dance, freedom to skip, freedom to run. And you might not like dancing or even shouting, but you're free enough to do it so that someone else has the opportunity. Can we just for 10 seconds, Lighthouse, let's just create an atmosphere of freedom, an atmosphere of expectation. Come on, if you need to dance, dance. If you need to shout, shout. If you need to run, run. Let's just set this place free for a moment. your greatest shout, your greatest praise, your greatest cheer, just go ahead, just for five seconds. Come on, five seconds, let's go, let's go, let's go. Jesus, we praise you, Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we exalt you, we thank you today for your goodness. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy. God, we thank you that you're the point. You're the reason. You're why we've gathered, not to hear me, not to hear a sound come from an instrument, but to encounter a living God. And God, I pray today that as I communicate, that I would not be a man that stands on a platform and becomes famous, but I would be a man that becomes the platform that you stand on and are made famous this morning. May you anoint my words. May they be on assignment to every heart, penetrating lives back to purpose, back to promise, back to dreams. God, I declare everything in this place, everybody watching, everything that's dead, that's supposed to be alive, every marriage that's dead, every prodigal son that's dead, every business idea that's dead, everything that's dead that's supposed to be alive would come back to life right now in Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that as we praise and pray, it says in your word on earth as it is in heaven, which in heaven there's no sickness, in heaven there's no disease, in heaven there's no cancer. So we just declare right now, everyone watching in their rooms and everyone in this room, that this is a sick-free zone. This is a cancer-free zone. This is an infirmity-free zone. And Holy Spirit, we give you permission to heal, to restore, back problems, chronic illnesses, sleep deprivation, anxiety, depression, mental health, herniated discs, right now in your name. We give you permission to heal. Do what you wanna do in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, is there an amen this morning? Why don't you, as you get ready to grab your seat, why don't you just pick one neighbor? You get to pick one of your favorite neighbors. Find your favorite neighbor quickly. Just one, find your favorite neighbor. No, I didn't say sit down. I have the mic, you have to do what I have to say. I don't get it. Just talking to you guys in the front, just joking. Find your favorite neighbor. Look at that neighbor, say, hey neighbor. Pick one neighbor, say, hey neighbor. If it wasn't for you, I'd be the best looking person here. Why don't you hug two to three people and grab your seats. Today, man, we are, I'm, I'm just like, aren't you so glad that God showed up? Yeah. Just got to be honest, for those of you who have maybe never been in a worship experience, have no clue what's going on, why I dance like a weirdo on stage, there's going to be a lot of explanations, okay? We're going to make sense, but it would be foolish if we did this thing, for, for those of us that call Lighthouse home, it'd be a foolish if we did this thing and God wasn't here, Right? It would be, how, how, how boring would it be if we just came to church and God didn't join us? So thank you for trusting and creating a little space for some of you that might have been extremely uncomfortable, 
for some of you who said have never been in a moment like this, uh, we just have been captivated by a God who's not dead but is alive, who's real, who is not trying to sell us programs or practices or concepts or precepts, or he's trying to introduce us to a person. And that person, his name's Jesus, and he actually loves you, cares about you. He's not in love with the future version of you. He's in love with you right now. Like the messed up you, the broken you, the strung out you, the real you, the real we all know. Like, right? Let's just be honest. The one that's not got it all together, the one that doesn't pay their taxes on time, the one that doesn't wear a seatbelt, like whatever it is for you, the one that drinks too much, right? Like, whatever. Like, he's in love with that you. He's not in love with the future version of you. He's madly in love with you. And my desire today is you, you, inter you get introduced to a new member of this family. I'm like an, adopting myself into this family. My desire is that I would just get out of the way and introduce you to him and give you what you need to be able to really win in this life as we're all just trying to figure out how to live together as we shared, Pastor Kevin, how to, how to die together because we've never done this thing before. And uh, I'm so honored to be with you. Just so you guys know, I, I, it feels like we're just meeting, but I've heard about you for a few years. I did have the privilege of being at a conference in the Northwest and meeting uh, your incredible pastors and was like, man, this guy kind of like everything I want to be and he's really good looking and smart and loves Jesus. And, and then he's like, and I'm in Cali and I'm like, man, let's be friends. And, um, you know, we've just been on an incredible journey. And here's what I can tell you about the family you're stepping into. You have leaders who genuinely care about you. Our conversations is not, Jed, how do I get more money? You know, our, our conversations are not, Jed, how do I just get more people where I come? He's, the conversations have been, how do I care for these people? How do I steward the high school students that are coming because there's a lot of young families and we need to win this generation that's emerging? How do we take care of these kids? The conversations your leaders are having in this house is how to serve you better, not how do you serve them better. The conversations is how do we provide more, give more, bless more, activate you, protect, promote, and propel your lives and legacies. That's the church that you're walking into, and these are the leaders that are, that are serving this house. And can we just take a moment to thank Pastor Kevin and Kaylee for the way that you've loved and served and honored. And Yeah, that's phenomenal. And uh, it's not easy being 29 and 28 in taking on a church that's been around for a few decades, right? They're the only ones laughing. <laughs> like, they're like, you don't know our pain, you know? But here's what I can tell you. This is the biblical, the biblical context for just what you guys are in as a season. Healthy things grow and growing things change. I was going to say this again. Healthy things grow. Anything that has health has life. Anything that has life has growth, Right? So healthy things grow and all growing things change, which is why Jesus says uh, you're being changed from glory to glory, which means if you're changing, it's because you're growing, and if you're growing, it's because you're healthy. So if you've said, hey, man, this church is just like changing, and it's constant changing, and new programs, and now the roof, and now more outreach, and one day more campuses, yeah, because you're growing. And the reason why you're growing is because you're healthy. So we should never stop change and minimize growth and basically sabotage health by not being a part of this process of healthy things, growing things, changing things. And that's really what you guys have experienced the last few years. Would you agree? Okay, I'm excited to, I'm going to get in trouble the clock second. I'm going to have to get to the actual message if you guys are okay with that. Um, if you have your Bibles, you can use them. I would encourage you to take notes. It's biblically founded. You're more likely to get into heaven if you do take notes, you know. <laughs> I'm joking if you're visiting, but it might be like a math equation when you get to the gates, right? They're like, show me your work. Like, how did you, how did you, do you have one thing that says Lighthouse Pastor Kevin on, like one note from one podcast? Like, how'd you get here? You know, so I encourage you to take notes. And um, I, I really think for me, since I'm getting to know you guys, and, and really, I'll just tell you, for, for my heart's just to be open and transparent and be very honest with, I think, well, how I'm processing, you know, these last 15, 16 months. And I think if we're to be honest, uh, the, in the last 15 to 16 months, everything that could have been shaken has been shaken. Would you agree? Don't have to be the most intelligent human being in the room to go, hmm, it's just gotten difficult. I mean, if you think about it over these last 15, 16 months, and although things are starting to get back to something we know, I wouldn't say normal, but something we know. I wouldn't call what we have known as now normal. I don't think we'll ever be normal again, but back to what we know, but when you look about it, I mean, 
Everything that has been shaken could have been shaken. For some of you, you don't have a job or you lost jobs and the PPP money wasn't enough because your economy's been shaken. I, I don't know about you, but just the basic routines of where we eat and how we work out and how we travel. And yes, I don't want my two-year-old to have a mask on a plane, but they have to. You know, like it just changes and disrupts the way we do things. I don't know about you, but has anyone lost friends in the last 15, 16 months? Like our friendships, some of these have been decade-long relationships, but because we didn't post or did post or didn't vote a certain way or did vote a certain way or put a mask on early or refused to ever wear one or like we're okay with a vaccine or weren't thinking about it, it's just the, the very fabric of our friendships have been shaken. Doesn't it feel like the moral fabric of our nation's been shaken? Like what's good? What's right? Who's right? Who's wrong? Like, what's truth? I mean, good God, if there's anything that was evasive and elusive in the 21st century, is this little thing called truth. As you guys have been talking about truth these last few weeks, it's been, it's been shaken, everything. Anyone would be like, Jedediah, yeah, my stuff's been shaken. And if we were to be honest, I think we've all started to realize too that it's not just that everything that could be shaken has been shaken, it's that there's this deep growing reality that that's probably not the last of the shaking. Do you guys agree? Like, I don't know what it's going to be, but I think we've all kind of concluded, hey, there's more stuff coming, <laughs> right? And there's that, that stuff's going to require a shaking, which means if everything that has been shaken has, or everything that could be shaken has been shaken and there's going to be more shaking, then what this means to this room and those watching online is what we build our lives on and what we build our lives with matters. In fact, I would argue and propose to you today that what we build our lives on and what we build our lives with has never mattered more than in this moment in time. What we build with and what we build our lives on drastically matter. And if we look at our primary text today, it's 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to go right to verse 13. But just as you, I bring you up with a little biblical due diligence of Paul, the author of this letter to the church in Corinth, as he's taking him on a journey to this moment of our primary text, and he, he, he's looking at this audience, this church just like this room, and he starts talking about love. And it's this epic chapter on love. We've all heard this love. It's not man's love. It's not our love. It's talking about God's love. And it starts out by, hey, this love's perfect. This love is patient. This love is kind. This love doesn't run out. This love doesn't keep records of wrong. That's how we knew it wasn't our love, right? We're like, yeah, no, we got the record. We got a file, homie, on everything you did. And if you're a girl, you have an extended file, right? Like you just know, like in the way you brush your teeth and you clip your tongue, like it's a file of records of wrongs, right? Like we have, a, and he goes on to say, this love will never walk off. It will never leave you. It will never forsake you no matter what. This love never fails. And then Paul continues, and the, the passage of Scripture takes this in, interesting twist, and he starts talking about understanding the future and speaking prophetically or spiritually into the future. And he says these words, which is such grounding truth for us to resonate with. He says, at the end of the day, and this is Jedediah's version, we can only see in part. What he's saying is, we really don't know. Can you, just, can you just give yourself permission? You don't know. What's tomorrow going to bring? What's the government going to do? What's the president going to do? What's the mayor going to do? What's city officials going to do? What's the church going to do? What are you, let's just be honest. We don't really know. And Paul's sitting there saying, hey, listen, as much as we have the spiritual insight, we're only getting pieces and pictures and glimpses of what God's trying to achieve on this planet. We don't know it all. We don't understand it all. In fact, the Bible says you don't even know when he's coming back. Like, we don't even know these things, which means the little face group community you're on or that text thread or that WhatsApp group that you chat with that says this is what's coming and buy a bunker and grab water and get your guns. Let me just say, they don't know. Are you okay with that? Everyone's like, no, I think my group knows. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is what the Bible said, not me. Paul said he doesn't know. This guy's in filled with the Holy Spirit, penning scriptures 2,000s of years later we're still trying to get revelation from. And the guy with the revelation saying, I don't have the revelation. Yeah. He says, we don't know. And then he says these words, because we don't know, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, these three things last forever. What he's saying 
as this message turns is we only see in part, prophesy in part, can understand in part, can plan in part. We don't know. But these three things, these things will remain. These three things are eternal that overshadow the temporal. These, these three things are unshakable, cannot be removed, will not waste away, will not fail, will not fade you. These three things matter. And these three things are faith, hope, in love, imagine the context. We don't know what's going to come. We don't know what's gonna happen. But what we do know is that when we build with these three components, our life will last. Our families will be unshakable. Our businesses cannot waste away because we built on faith, hope, and love. Say these with me, faith, hope, and love. And why is this important? Is because I can continue to try to talk to you about the storms. Many believers are spending time trying to figure out the future storms and the length of the storms and the type of the storms, and they're focused on the storms. I'm trying to get you to be focused on the stuff. If you focus on faith, hope, and love, doesn't matter how long the storm is. Doesn't matter how big the storm is. Doesn't matter what the storm is. Doesn't matter when the storm is, because these three things will last forever. Anyone want to build an unshakable life? Anyone want to outlast the next shaking that comes our nation's way? It's these three things, faith, hope, and love. Can I talk to you about these three components today to build an unshakable life? Yes? A few of you, I need permission here. Okay, thank you. Faith, hope, and love. The first of these is faith. Faith is so significant. Faith is the, is the currency of heaven. I just want you to see it that way. It's like take our dollar bill and write the word faith on it, and that is the currency of heaven is faith. It is the purchasing power of heaven. Like the reason why you buy something is because you have something in your bank account. If you don't have money in your bank account you, or, or you haven't borrowed money, you have no purchasing power. Faith is what allows you to walk into the room and buy something, build something, break something, do something, because it's your purchasing power. Faith is the currency of heaven, and I'll add one truth to it. Honor is the platform on which it's exchanged. This is so significant for us to get, because when you actually don't have honor, faith will not be able to work. Like, you could pray all you want, you could love all you want, but if you dishonor leadership, if you dishonor your friends, if you dishonor your spouse, it actually closes the windows of heaven over your life. Faith can't be exchanged. Jesus is the model of this. Jesus shows up. You guys know the story. He walks into his hometown, and they're like, wait, isn't this Joseph's boy? Isn't this the carpenter who cut wood in the wood shop? Like, I, I, I know him, and the Bible says Jesus was reduced to only do a few miracles because they dishonored him, which means... Faith is the currency of heaven, but honor is the platform in which it's exchanged, which means if there's no honor, there will be no faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I want you to get this. Faith is not ethereal. Faith is not elusive. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, chapter 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And that word means substance is very similar to this platform. It actually means substructure. It means firm foundation. Faith is not a ghost we're chasing or a feeling we're faking. Faith is a platform in a position and a posture we're standing on. I have hope for tomorrow because I have a faith for today. And my faith for today is anchored on, built on, stands on this cornerstone called Christ and what he did for us on the cross. And I know he'll be good tomorrow because he was good 2,000 years ago. The definition and the description of his love has been defined and defended. Faith, thank you for the one good I needed that. Makes me Stay with me, stay with me. Faith is so important because the level of your faith will determine the level of your breakthrough. Say that again in case you missed it. The level of your faith determines the level of your breakthrough. A lot of times leaders will say an organization can only rise to the level of its leadership. A church can only function at the level of its faith. What you accomplish here will be determined not by what you feel, but what you have faith for. And actually, you're not having faith for, you're having faith from. We feel like we have faith for the future. No, your faith for the future is actually your faith from the past. I don't have faith for, I actually have faith from. And the level of your faith determines the level of your breakthrough. And let me show you how this is so uh, significant. If you were to go with me quickly to... Matthew chapter 8, Matthew, and we have the verses on the screen. This is the story of the Roman centurion. This Roman centurion has a sick servant. He, he shows up to Jesus, and he says, Jesus, my servant is ill at home. 
you know, would you, would you heal him? And Jesus actually says these words, what do you want me to do? He goes, he actually says, do you want me to come to the house? Now, I want you to notice the demeanor of Jesus. Jesus constantly throughout scripture is actually trying to get us to articulate the level of expectation we have for what he's going to do. He's actually looking at the, he knows he's sick. He could just say, I'm going to heal him. But he asked the servant to declare, the, or the Roman centurion, to declare the level of his faith, to determine the level of his breakthrough. What do you want it to look like? And the Roman centurion says, Jesus, I'm like you. It's this gangster response. He goes, I'm like you. And he doesn't say a man who's got authority. He's like, I'm like you, Jesus. I'm a man who's under authority. Therefore, I'm over 100 men. He had a revelation that no one had of the posture and position of Jesus Christ, who was God who became man and modeled not just making disciples, but being discipled. He said, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. So I'm not just modeling making disciples. I'm modeling being discipled. I'm not just modeling having authority. I'm modeling being under authority. You know where we get messed up as believers? We're not under anything. Therefore, we're over nothing. Some of you are like, hey, I want to have a breakthrough in my relationships. Who's your accountability partner? Who's your pastor? Who's your leader? You won't have authority over that marriage until you put your marriage and your life under authority. Some of you are trying to break out into industry and, 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 and innovate and be an entrepreneur. And it's like, hey, that's awesome. That means your money better have authority. But the Bible says if you're not under authority, which means your money's not tithing, you're not giving, you're not generous, you're not obeying God with the basics, he's not going to bless you with the, mund the miraculous if you're not going to be faithful with the mundane. We actually have to be under. Now listen, I know no one likes me for saying this. I get it. Like this is the moment like, oh, I'm so hurt about the church and authority and you're just another man of God trying to create the man of God mentality. Hear me. I don't care. I don't care about the person, I care about the principle. God honors you honoring the principle. That's why there's people in the world that don't have God that are being blessed because they're still using the principle. So if you're not over, I asked you, get yourself under. That was for fun and for free. I know you didn't like it, but it's truth. So he says, I'm like you. And then he, I just wanna tell you what he does. He makes up the miracle. You might not be comfortable with this, but at this point in scripture, Jesus never healed this way before. Everybody he was in proximity to, everyone he either talked to or he touched or he spit on. It's like, but this guy wasn't in spitting proximity. He was in, there's not enough, there's too much distance. So this guy makes up the miracle. He basically says, hey, Jesus, just text it in. Send a Snapchat, you know, do a quick Insta DM. Like, that's all you got to do. Just do a share code, send a QR code out there. Like, we think it's crazy. That's what that was back then. He's like, hey, don't come to the house. Just say the words. You know what? Just say it. And the most powerful part of this, this end of the scripture is Jesus looks at him and he says, let it be done just as you believed it to be. I, I want you to get this. And I know it's going to offend a few people that are really spiritual or religious. He said, you made up the miracle and I'm gonna facilitate the miracle the way you made it up. Which basically just so you know, as a church, as believers, he's giving you a blank check and we're the ones who determine when we put a decimal point instead of a comma. He never said stop writing zeros on your blank check. We just wake up one day with faith and then more faith and then a little faith and then less faith and then our faith hits the facts and then our facts change our feelings and then we lose our faith and then we stop the check and say this is all God's got. But he makes this up and he lets the level of his breakthrough be determined by the level of his faith, which means the question is for us in this room when it comes to our faith, is some of what we're living or feeling or facing simply just a self-fulfilling prophecy of what we believe is going to happen? Are you with me? Are you with me online? Is for some of what we're dealing with, could we just be living in a self-fulfilling prophecy of exactly what we expected it to be? Never gonna find the right man, just as you believed it to be. Or a better way, I hear this all the time, there's no good men left. Thank you for prophesying that into the future. <laughs> it's like, you're ruining the men by saying that, by the way. It's like, there's no good men left. Well, just as you believed it to be. 
Let's just let the, oh, I'm never going to get out of this debt just as you believed it to be. I'm always going to have this chronic pain just as you believed it. There's no way my son will come back to Christ. My husband will come back to Christ. My grandparents will come back to Christ. They're too far off. It's just too difficult. It's just impossible just as you believed it to be. I'll never see God back in our schools. We'll never see God back in the government. We'll never see God back in our cities just as you believed it to be. Could we be living in self-fulfilling prophecies of exactly what we're expecting it to be and what God wants you to do today is shift your expectation. It's time to change exactly what we're believing it to be. If you want to know the church you're a part of, your leaders believe what I believe. We are standing in the best decade of ministry history since the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the start of the early church. I believe we will see the greatest harvest of souls saved in the next 10 years of America. I believe we're witnessing the greatest five-year turnaround in our nation's history, and I don't care what the world says. I know what God has said, and he's coming back for a church that's glorious, that's united, that's bright, that's a light on the top of the hill that can't be turned out. He's coming back for the head and not the tail. He's coming back for a kingdom that's been established. We are living in the best era of our lives. It's time to shift our expectation. I will find the right man. My marriage will last. I will take over that industry. I will be an ideator, an innovator, an investor, a builder, an explorer. I have good things inside of me and God coming out of me. Sorry if I'm a little passionate. It's just time to shift our expectation. What do you want me to do for you? That's what Jesus is asking you. Here's a blank check. Feel free to make it up. If you want to build to last, if you want to build unshakable, it's faith, it's hope, and it's love. Say this with me. Faith. faith. You guys are so smart. I didn't even have to say it. Let's do it one more time. It just felt good. Just faith. love you guys. Hope. You're awesome. Love. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Faith, hope, and love. The second of these is, is hope. Can I talk to you about hope for a few moments? Yeah. If you don't have hope, it's because you don't have faith. See, the Bible says, I'm just going to use the Bible. It's not Jedediah's stuff. The Bible says, faith is the substance, the substructure, the firm foundation of things to hope for, which means the tangible thing for this eternal thing is this physical thing called faith, which means if you don't have faith for today, you for sure do not have hope for tomorrow. And hope is not for today. Faith is for today because faith is an action. Faith is actually a verb, it's not a noun. It is an action. And because I have faith for today, I can actually have endless hope for tomorrow, which means if I do not have hope, it's because I have lost faith. Hope is one of the greatest underrated attributes of the believer. Can I just go there for a second? You with me? You with me in the back, LA hat? I love you, you with me? Yeah, I love it, love it, love it. Hope kind of took a break for the church for the last 15 months. Let me put it this way. I looked at what people were posting on social media and those that have a fish sticker on their shirt versus those who don't sounded the same. We posted the same. We sound just as scared, just as psychotic, just as frantic, just as fearful. Can I just be honest? I'm talking about myself too. Like I'm in the stage with you. I'm like here, like, tell, like we sounded like everyone else. And the whole world was going, I need help. I need faith. And we're like standing there with the answer being like, I'm just as lost. I'm just as confused. In fact, I hate you. <laughs> Hope is the most underrated attribute. And I'm like, why did we sound like everyone else? You know, there's this science, a scientist. His name was Kirk Ritter. Kirk Ritter, was a, he was a Harvard grad in the 1950s. He was a John Hopkins scientist. And he did what a lot of scientists do. They wanted to study things that no one cares about. <laughs> it's like... So in the 1950s, God bless the one scientist in the room, by the way. There would only be one statistically. He's like, in the 1950s, he goes, you know what I'm wondering? How long a rat would live swimming in a bucket of recycled water? Said no one ever. You know, it's like, no one walked up today. I wonder how long the life expectancy is of a rat swimming in a bucket of recycled water. He did. And they started testing this. And by the way, these are not hamsters or mice. These are not beautiful home pets. These are rats. Disgusting. We want them dead. Okay, like everyone. If you own a rat, we're sorry. We forgive you. There's a moment at the end of service. We will get that right, okay? Like, and all the rat haters said, 
Okay, thank you. Like, we hate rats. Guys, quit acting like I'm a weirdo. Like, I feel guilty about this rat hate. You know, it's just a rat. Anyways, average life expectancy of a rat swimming in a bucket of recycled water. Every rat on average was 15 minutes. Every rat. Swim 15 minutes, glorious, die at the 15-minute mark. Every rat on average. As, as John continued, excuse me, as Kirk continued the story, he, he stopped the rat from dying right at the 14 and a half minute mark. He would pull the rat out, he would rest the rat, dry the rat off, and then 15 to 20 minutes later, put it right back in the bucket of water. Do you know how long the second groups of rats swam for the second time? Anyone? 50 minutes? This is your moment to talk in church? Five minutes. <laughs> Like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I get it. You're not used to this moment. It's fine. 60 hours. 60 hours. 240 times longer. This was not one rat. Every rat, on average, that got pulled out, dried off, and put back in, swam a second time 60 hours as compared to 15 minutes. So science. You can Google it. I am not making it up. You know what science concluded? The only difference between the rat that died and the rat that quit swimming is the rat that kept swimming had been pulled out and had a reference point for being rescued. And since it had been rescued before, it instilled in it the concept of hope to continue to swim another minute, another lap, another hour, another hour, another hour, because it had a reference point of being rescued that it would cause itself to swim longer than every other rat can I tell you something, friends? The Bible says that we have been rescued. You and I have been rescued from a deadly peril. And on him, Jesus Christ, we set our hope because he will surely rescue us again. The reality is the reason why we love more than everyone else, swim more than everyone else, serve longer than everyone else is because we have been rescued. Not will be rescued, not could be rescued. Our eternal posture and position has been changed forever. We've been rescued and our hope is different than everyone else's hope because our hope is not in a program. Our hope is not in principles. Our hope is not in a platform. Our hope is not in a financial position. Our hope is not in a 401k or an investment strategy. Our hope is not in what we own or what we occupy. Our hope is not just in a song or simply in our service. Our hope was born 2,000 years ago in a manger and was baptized in a Jordan. Our hope is the man who hung on the middle tree. Our hope conquered sin, death, and the grave. Our hope has no equal. Our our hope has no rival. Our hope, just so you know, is the undefeated reigning champion of humanity. Our hope has a name. Our hope is alive. And that hope's name is Jesus. We have a hope. If we could get the keys up, we should keep running. That's why you guys keep serving your community. That's why you guys keep changing and growing. Hell, that's why you keep making room for people. You want to know why? Because you've been rescued. This church is going to sound different than every temple. It's going to sound different than every mosque. It's going to sound different than every other religion because we are running from a hope, not just running towards a hope. If you want to build a life to last, if you want to build a marriage, a business, a family, a ministry, that's unshakable. There's three things that will remain, three things that will last forever. These three things cannot be removed. It's faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. That's what Paul said. Hey, there's these three unshakable, these three eternal things. And the greatest of these three things is, is love. So much so that in John, as Jesus Christ is basically finishing a, a dinner with his homeboys. He's had three and a half years with these average blue collar workers, these fishermen, these tax collectors, these betrayers, people just like us, right? In every disciple, you can find one of you. <laughs> he had just finished. I just wanted you to imagine the, the first time he touched dirt, he created man. The second time or the last time, excuse me, he touched dirt, he cleansed man. Before this meal starts that I'm gonna take you to, this last supper, you've seen the picture. Jesus, the servant of all, goes one lower and says, let me just wash your feet. Think about it. 
the infinite one who time cannot contain, the creator of the universe had reduced himself to his own creation and now he was removing the dirt in which he created it with. He touched dirt, he made man, he removed dirt to cleanse man. He's now got a few last words before the cross and he looks at them and he says, a new command I give to you. And we're all on bated breath, right? Like, it's just a few last words. A new command I give to you. Breaking the bread, passing the cup. Love! And we're like, no, <laughs> right? Don't go to that one. Like, there's so many other things we could do better. He goes, love one another. <laughs> it's got to be honest, man. People aren't easy to love. If you just, thank you, like, this guy's honest. He's like, you're not supposed to say that. You're, you're going to be, we love people. Let's be honest. That does not always work out well. And he goes, I, I need you to love one another. And we're processing, if I'm being honest, when I first read it and pause, I'm processing me loving one another the way that I love one another. Right? Like, you're like, okay, my version of it, which means I kind of don't like you, but I act like I do, which means I'm kind of like passive aggressive and like never come over to your house. Like, mine is like, I have a private face group chat about you, like, but like, I'm inviting you to church. Like, right, whatever. Let's just be honest. Like, love one another. My mother-in-law, yeah. My father, yeah. My ex-husband, oh, he's included. The guy who abused me, yeah, love one another. Like, what about that corrupt dictator? What about that person who's pursuing evil? Yeah, kind of like everyone's one another. And then he just, he just, you gotta be honest. Jesus just knows how to go there, right? It's like, you're good at this, God. He's like, love one another. And then he's like getting ready to drop the mic. Like I've loved you. And then like walks off. He's like, I need you to love everyone. It's already hard enough, but then love them like I love them. Selfless, sacrificial, unconditional. Let's be very honest, illogical. So much of this love is illogical. It's you do bad and you get good. It's your worst for his best. It's your mess for his, I mean, think about it. And he's saying, I need you. And then I just, I wanna take it one step further and I'm taking my time because you're the second service and we got a little time. I want you to love one another the way I've loved you. And then he says, it's by this. This is what I want to land today. It's by this that people will know. What is he saying? Jedediah, lighthouse, friend, the MO of every believer, the reputation, the, the trademark, the branding that should come with every believer, the logical conclusion of every atheist and agnostic, when they intro introduce to you or are referencing you, it says the MO would be that we love one another. Like what is the reputation of the church? These are the people who love no matter what. But I have to be honest, I don't think we're doing the best job with our reputation. In fact, some of you could be in here today or watching, and the reason why you're watching online and not in the room is because you came into a room and they did not do a good job of showing you God loved them. Some of you came today, risked uncomfortable, risked walking through a room you've never been in, wish taking your kids to a place you've never known. And the reason why you haven't gotten here sooner is because someone who called themselves Christian or pastor or spiritual advisor did not live up to their reputation. And I wanna thank you for taking a risk on us again. I wanna thank you for those watching on taking a risk on being introduced to Jesus the right way. But the question is for us, and it's a little different than second service is, I think we're not doing the worst job of loving the lost, but doing a really bad job of loving the found who don't look like us, vote like us, talk like us, but have the same Jesus. Would you agree? In fact, I'm, I'm gonna just move quickly and just get this out. I'm sorry, I just wanna release this. But we don't have to agree as believers on everything to unite. I just want you to hear this. Like, we don't have to agree as believers, as Christ followers. Like, I'm not talking about you and your spouse, or I'm not talking about, you know, can't operate with the word. I'm saying as Christ followers, we don't have to agree on everything to unite. And the enemy wants to think you do so he can defend your position of disagreement and separation. But we disagree so we don't have to unite. 
can I just tell you something? As Christ followers, we don't have to agree on a politician, on a political party, on a government policy, on an economic strategy, or even the vaccine to unite. Can, can I just continue on? As Christ followers, we don't have to be a part of the same denomination, have the same discipleship mechanism, have the same service style, sing the same songs, or walk through this, the same growth track process to unite. As Christ followers, we actually don't even have to have the same skin color, have the same zip code, have the same social status, to, to unite. As Christ followers, we don't even have to have the same past, have the same pain, have the same present, or have the same prophetic view of the future to unite. Do you wanna know why? Because as Christ followers, as much as we might disagree on a few things, we can absolutely agree on a couple things. We can unite because we're part of the same family. We have the same father. We've been rescued by the same unconditional love. We've been compelled and commissioned by this same grace for the same eternal mandate. We can unite because we're a part of one church who makes up one team, which is a part of one family, which means it doesn't matter how we voted or if we vaccinated, we can unite. which is why your church, which is amazing, has united. You might not know this, but you are actually financial supporters of missions.me. You guys have been making this possible. When you see that video, it's not like, oh, we're just hearing about it. No, you guys have helped make all of those things possible. That's why your pastors, your church will be a part of this July 24th moment because for the last year, we've been trying to rebuild the reputation of the church. And to date, over 641 different churches have officially participated in this campaign. We have the Archdiocese involved, the Jewish Federation involved. We have people that aren't Christians involved. Why? Because it's not about fine people serving lost people. It's about found people and broken people loving humanity together. We can actually be conservative and liberal, gay and straight, different, but still be the same because we want to help hurting humanity. In the last year, we've had 47 million in medical debt eradicated for 23,000 families. Your church was a part of that. 1,500 families have stepped up to foster and adopt. This church was a part of it. There is a full gospel presentation with worship in all 35 prisons in the state of California every week since Easter. Right now, an average of 3,500 inmates are watching for the first time in LA, California's history, a gospel message. That's what this campaign's a part of. In July 24th, you're gonna hear so much more about it, but you'll be invited to serve as one of the many churches serving your city. Beautification projects, medical brigades, sports clinics, the mayors are involved, and this is gonna all culminate. I can't tell you, we leaked a little bit in first service, but July 1st, you'll hear the special announcement at the venue in LA with the talent that is gonna be a part of it. And I can just tell you, we get to be a part of sharing the greatest message of humanity from one of the greatest venues in America, from one of the greatest and some of the greatest young talents of our day, from the communication capital of the world, to begin to take back the word we're supposed to be known for, which is simply love. How many are excited to be a part of it? <laughs> so Jedediah, uh, what can I expect for the future? Faith, hope, and love. Jedediah, how are we gonna navigate 2022? Faith, hope, and love. Jedediah, what are we gonna do when the next storm comes? Faith, hope, and love. Jedediah, how are we gonna change Ventura? How are we gonna change this area? You wanna know how? How's the church gonna last? How's the church gonna win? What is our message to the world? greatest of these is love. As we um, just close with a time of ministry, thank you for just letting me be me and uh, be honest and be transparent. And if there's anything I did that offended you, uh, you're going to have your real pastor back next week and uh, he's going to clean everything up. And uh, for those of you who are like, man, I've never seen someone sweat like this or you're like this or what's going on, uh, but there's something inside that's real. That, that's, that's that God thing. And we're not welcoming you into a building or to a religious organization. 
If you're watching, participating online, we're inviting you to be a part of a family. And what I'd love to do as we close today is really pray for, I just wanna pray for two groups of people. Uh, the first group of people, if you were to be honest with me, if we were to have a talk, I'd love to just spend time with every one of you, like just sit down and if you're, if you're a caffeine drinker, I, I support legal addictions, caffeine is legal. Um, if you're a caffeine, you know, share a cup of coffee or if you love sushi, I could go crazy on some sushi and spice of mayo, like whoever that is. Like if we were just a round of golf, like whoever you are, like if we were to have a moment and actually just go there, like and for you to talk about the stuff you'd never talk about, right? If we're just to go there and finally get to that point where you're honest and open and transparent, you might say these words like Jedediah, like my marriage is going to hell and I can't figure this thing out. Jedediah, it's been one abusive relationship after another abusive relationship and I'm just not succeeding relationally or Jedediah, I've went from one addiction to another and I didn't start this way, it was a car accident and they gave me these stupid scripts and then I you know, used them all and had to find more and now it's been this cycle where I'm snorting it or slamming it or whatever, like let's just be honest, right? Like you would be transparent and say I can't stop drinking or I, I'm trying to numb the pain or I can't shake this debt and everything I touch fails. That was you, if we were to have that moment, maybe you'd finally get to the point and I think this is where the conversation would have to lead, the simple understanding that you might need help. That what you've been doing hasn't been working and you can't shake it on your own, get out of it on your own, figure it out on your own and if we were to have that conversation of you're even online watching, you just might say these words, I need help. I've been there. I'm there most days where I just need help. And if you're here today and you need help, what your spirit is saying is you need Jesus. See, Jesus is the only one that can fill this God's size shape hole in your heart. Jesus is the only one that can come in and make sense of this mess called your life. Jesus is the only one from my experience that could take your worst and give you his best. We actually use the words and the faith narrative this is great exchange because he's taking the pain of your past and he's giving you the plan of his promise he's taking your shame and your sin and he's giving you his savior and your salvation it's this crazy exchange where you couldn't earn it you can't work for it you can't check enough boxes to be qualified for it it is just he loves to help his kids and if you're here today saying you need help your spirit saying you need jesus and if you're here today saying you need Jesus, I wanna help Jesus help you. And the way we do that is by saying a simple prayer because what I've learned about God is he's a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on anyone. If he did, we'd all be following him. <laughs> he's God, he'd be good at the force thing if he wanted to. But he's like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want this fake or fabricated, I want this for real. Which means you have to decide you want me. I've already decided before I created you, I wanted you. You're not here by default, you're here by divine design and divine desire, but you have to say, I need help. If you're here watching or you're in the room, I wanna help you say, I help me, Jesus. In fact, would you just close your eyes right now, wherever you're at, unless you're driving on a phone watching, don't get in a car accident, but wherever you're at, just say these words with me. Say, dear Jesus, I need you. I need your help. Would you help me today? you come into my life? Would you forgive me of my mistakes? Would you make me brand new? Would you make me like you? Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In your name we pray. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, just a few more moments. We're about to get out there to the sun in seconds, but if you're here today or you're watching online and you're saying, Jedediah, I wanted to say that prayer. I meant it when I said that prayer. Thank you for helping me say that prayer. Friend, what you're not saying is you got it all figured out. What you're not saying is that you're never gonna make a mistake. What you're not saying is that you're gonna be perfect from here on out. What you're saying is that in view of eternity and what God did for you, you wanted to be included in this moment. Whether it's your 50th time saying this prayer or your first time, but today this prayer of I need Jesus and I need help and I want you in my life, you wanted to, you meant it, and you needed to. If that's you, no one looking around, not trying to embarrass anyone, just a moment between me, you and God, if that was you, you needed to, wanted to, meant it, 
when you said that prayer. Would you just quickly raise your hand to let me know who you are? Needed to say that prayer, wanted to say that prayer. See that hand, see that hand, see that hand, see these hands, see these hands in the back. More hands, more hands, see these hands on the left. Come on, who else just put it up? More hands. I mean, there's like 17, 18 hands, hands in the back, hands on the side. Come on, more hands, unbelievable. Anyone else just quickly put it up, put it up if you didn't yet. Come on, I see you in the back, that's unbelievable. I see you right there, that is unbelievable. And you're online, click a button, tell someone. That's unbelievable, you could put your hands down. In fact, could we, can we not just put our heads up, could we stand up as we get ready to close and move into a moment of worship? Lighthouse Church, first of all, can we just put our hands together from the stacks of hands? Come on, the Bible says that heaven's throwing the most outrageous party in heaven, like it's going ballistic. <laughs> this is all I'm gonna say. We're gonna go into worship as we close. And if you need prayer, you know, just move into this moment. God's here to do whatever you want. All I could say is if you're here today, you said that prayer you wanted to, first time or 50th, you raised your hand or inside raised your hand in your heart. Whatever you do, don't leave here and do life alone. Don't leave here and do life alone. What I've learned is that no one wins over a long period of time consistently alone. No one. Everyone has a coach, a mentor, a counselor, a family, a pastor, a church. Everyone who wins consistently has community. And the worst thing you could do is leave here and try to fight this battle called life and live this life of faith alone, isolated, because an isolated Christian is a defeated Christian. Go to our, our, our guest lounge, go to our next steps. There's so many ways here. They're gonna tell you how to get connected. Let's pray for you one more time and then let's worship. Father God, God, I pray one, that hope would come into every heart, into every home. God, I pray, Lord, that we would leave here full of faith, overflowing with new expectations of the life of the miraculous that we're gonna live. And God, I pray, Lord, that love would not be a concept, but a lifestyle. Love would be something we're known for. Love would be our reputation. Love would go before us and love would come behind us. And God, I pray, Lord, that even this next year, as Lighthouse continues to be a house of light in the city and surrounding communities, God, I pray, Lord, that the newspapers would report on the acts of love happening here. Social media, Lord, and influencers go, I have to share what's happening here. May we leave here and not just say we went to church, but we, may we leave here and become the church. God, we give you all the praise and honor. Come on, if you believe it, let's worship together one last time.
us and it will produce great fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can we thank Jedediah today? Thank you so much. And a couple of things, if you did make a decision today to follow Jesus, uh, we do believe that's the greatest decision that you'll ever make in your life. We encourage you to stop by our guest lounge. We want to put just a free gift in your hand that helps answer some questions about what your next steps is. And we would also love to connect you with some people so that we can help get you discipled in the ways of the Lord and pray for you, whatever you may need. So make sure to stop there uh, before you leave today. And then uh, July 24th, come on, everybody say July 24th. Come on, we're going to be a part partner with 641 yeah. plus and growing other churches in this region to see the greatest revival that Los Angeles has ever seen. And uh, so excited to be a part of that. Keep standing. We're going to close here briefly. Just want to make a mention. If this is your home and you came ready today to give, there's a lot of ways to give. But the simplest and easiest way to give is to just text the word give to the number 805-321-1818. And if you're in the room today, you have a check. You can drop it in one of the giving boxes when you leave today after yeah. service what do we got after service don't rush out we have our summer kickoff still going on we have hot dogs out there cotton candy popsicles so grab your family grab your friends go hang out play some games meet some new people gonna be a great time yeah, gonna be gonna a great be time, time hanging out next Sunday it is 4th of July there you go okay there's your full warning that is not permission to skip church okay so <laughs> we'll see you next Sunday well yeah. free ice cream after service is gonna be a great time yeah and then if you're, and you're then new if you are new with us we are so glad that you have come you have visited us we are so glad we would love to meet you we have a guest lounge right out the doors to your left and we have a team that would love to say hi get to know you just meet you and Say some words. <laughs> Amazing. God bless your church this week. Help us to share faith. Help us to share hope. Help us to share love wherever we go. Empowered by the Spirit of God. Bless your church today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Bless week. you guys. Have a great week.